such a uh, pleasure and a warm welcome back. He's one of my favourite people I've ever met in sport. Wayne Smith joins us. G'day, mate. How are you? How are you? Oh, g'day, Marty. How are you? I'm really good. Congratulations. Um, that last few seconds of the semi-final, what were you doing when she was lining up the kick? Uh, packing my iPad and my notes up, heading out the door. <laughs> mm-hmm. Were you prepared? Uh, Were you prepared for it to go over, or did you just think it's one of those things, or what? How do you how do you how do you cope with that moment? Um, yeah, no, it's fine. Like the, I couldn't have asked any more of the girls. Like we we didn't play probably quite as well as we we could do. We were a bit jittery at the start, but you couldn't ask any more of them. They had huge hearts and huge desire to attack. So I just thought, what will be will be. Um, then when when um, she missed it. Um, I watched Kennedy Simon catching it. It came over her shoulder, and I thought, "Geez, that's a hard, pretty hard catch." She caught it. Then I think she, she said to me, she thought Porsche could score down the other end, so it's <laughs> going to pass it to her. <laughs> 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 there you go. Really? <laughs> and then, and then decided, no, I better hold on to it. So I drove in, and then about seven girls piled in to clean the ruck, and we kicked it out. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it was a pretty amazing finish. Yeah. Look, um, I just a, a small word of advice. This Saturday, if that happens, just just kick it into touch. Just just into touch. Let Porsche Porsche will do a thing later on. Just to touch it, okay? Just out. No, but there, there, there were um, ten seconds left. Oh uh, God! Which would have been to line out. Which would have been to line out to France and our uh, um, lethal off that. So it was really clear thinking from Kennedy Simon. She knew exactly what she had to do, basically. You know. I, I wondered whether when they lined up that 35 metre um, penalty, Smithy, I, was, I actually thought France would actually go for the corner there for the, with, the, with the one woman advantage and everything else and actually risk us conceding a penalty. I don't know about you, but as a coach, I was thinking go for the corner. Yeah, I've probably no coach in the world would have done that. Okay, that's why I'm not a coach. <laughs> I think every coach would have, <laughs> I think every coach would have um, backed that kick to go over. She had a hell of a game, that girl, too. Yeah. She's a good player, Caroline yeah. Caron. But they're a good team, mate. I mean, that's the whole thing. And I, you know, and I felt, I feel like you know, a lot of the media coverage it hasn't actually been analysing how good they actually were. And I knew that you knew because you'd spent a lot of time studying yeah. them. Um, you know, to beat that team after what happened twice last year, oh, you must be so immensely proud because that's a really big, long way that our team has come. Yeah, they, um, yeah, they're one of the better teams I've seen. They've probably probably got the best defence. Close to it of, of any team. I, I just wonder whether Sean Edwards has been helping them because he's coaching the French defence. Right. They're very, very similar. Um, they're, they're big athletic. Talking to one of their staff members who was here actually in the 211 World Cup with the men's team. So he was pretty gutted. But, um, you yeah, know, they'd been building up for four years for this. And, um, you know, they'd targeted the final. And, and you know, we're really keen to win the World Cup. So, yeah, it was a big effect. Um, really, really out of girls. How do you temper the excitement leading into Saturday then? Uh, and 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 also, do you do you have a policy of saying to your women, stay away from the social media or something, or can't you do that? They're just going to do it anyway. How do you kind of? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, dumb. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we did in uh, two eleven, but times have changed. Um, no, social media is a big part of the world today, and. Look, I, they'll be excited. They're not a, you know, we're not a team that gets too um, uptight about things. You know, they love a dance and they love a sing, and uh, they play for the joy of it, Marty. You know, um, it's, it's been a pretty long road for them to get here. It's been a bit of a struggle at times. They work, you know, some got kids. Um, hasn't been easy, and so they make the most of it. You know, they're not going to waste, they're not going to waste a moment sure. of enjoyment. They, they love it. Is it <clears throat> watching? You know the dynamic between a, a squad of women playing a World Cup and a squad of men playing a World Cup. Is it is it worlds apart, Wayne? Um, it's not worlds worlds apart in terms of the expectations, the um, you know the way we want to play. Obviously, is an attacking. We've got an attacking game, and we've almost got to the point now where we can't do anything else. Like we started off six months ago, and and I was really keen that we made a lot of mistakes at training, so that there was a growth mindset. And you know, if they weren't making mistakes, it wasn't hard enough. Um, I don't seem able to stop it now. Right. <laughs> so, right. Uh, so they've got a huge just jacking intent from anywhere, and um, yeah, that's exciting. So from that point of view, similar to All Blacks, 
you know, um, play similar rugby. It's in our DNA. Yeah, the, the build-up's different. You know, I, I think I've I've said to you before the the men um, have to play well to to really feel good about it. You know, you, because the winning's so important and makes you feel good. Uh, for the women, they got to feel good to to play well. Wow, it's slightly different, but um, similar similar expectations and. Hey, we're the same people, aren't we, in terms of DNA? So it's it's that attacking instinct is well bedded. Wayne Smith, Black Ferns coach, with us. <clears throat> I love the fact that you pulled the underdog card early. Early. <laughs> Did we? Yeah. yeah. I heard you said that. I read something there. You said that Wayne Smith said we're underdogs. Look, it's a World Cup final. Does it really matter whether you go in as favourites or something like that? I mean, it's just media stuff, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, look... Um, if you'd asked me two or three months ago, I would have said a one in ten chance if we made the final of, of beating England. Might have gone up slightly, but you know that they've you know, they've won thirty in a row, Marty. They're um, they're outstanding, probably the best women's team I've ever seen. They're well drilled. They've been together a long time. They've been professionalised, and you can see that. You know they're, they're an outstanding team. Well, yeah, you've always got a chance. Uh, we're going to have to be really good, though. We're going to have to we're going to have to play the greatest game that we've played all year. How goddamn! What a what a wonderful thing to lay out in front of somebody and say, if you want this, you have to be this biggest superstar. You you have to play better than you've ever played. Yeah. What an incentive, mate! Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, the, the week's important. We 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 have a lot of fun early on on the week and. We're, we're getting together tonight for a club night. Oh, that's a great night, isn't it? Yeah, do. jerseys and things, yeah. And do you have to do an act again? Yeah, yeah. No, don't pull out the same uh, act. No, I've, right. done, I've done all mine. Okay. I've done, I've done all mine. <laughs> Just wearing my Belfast jersey is enough. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping, to, I'm hoping to win the raffle tonight because it's, it's, it's better than a meat pack. I think there's some good prizes tonight. So, yeah, that, that's my aim. I'm cooking the barbecue, actually. Ted and Crono and I are cooking the barbecue tonight. Brilliant. So, um, <clears throat> The three old fellas, three old fellas on the tools. Look, a bit of barbecue experience, I would say there. And so, who's in charge? Because yeah. there's got to be a chef. It'd be Ted. Is Ted Paul rank on the barbecue? Ted, yeah. yeah, Ted Paul's rank on the barbecue. Hundred percent. Yeah, I understand. Ted, yeah. yeah, he stands there with a we we red in his hand and and orders us around. Um, he's a bit of an expert on it. I'm gathering Chrono, though. Chrono likes, uh, Sorry, Chrono likes a sausage, you know, bar. Chrono likes a barbecue. Of course, he does. Mate, you mm. can't be built like that and love scrum so much without liking a barbecue. But what I'm gathering exactly. is that, you know, you're relaxing enough. You've introduced a fun element back into it. How important was that? When we spoke, I think in May it might have been when we started the platform, and you just got you just got that. You, there were a couple of things you said to me. You said you wanted the fun back, but you also wanted the accountability, and if you didn't get picked, you can sulk for a night, and then you come back into the team environment, and you're part of all of that, and you've got to G the next person up. How much, though, important was it to get that whole just, hey, we're playing rugby here, let's have some fun doing it, getting that attitude back? Yeah, it's like it's... Um, we've just gone back to what the game was all about, really, wasn't it? You know, back in my day, um, when I came through, I played rugby because you know, I loved to be with my mates initially, and um, it was a thing to do, and it was great fun, you know, and you stood at the bar for a beer afterwards, and props showed you what they did in a scrum, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And so, it, essentially, that's that's where the, the roots of the game are. Um, of course, it's professional now, and, and things are different, but I think feeding that attitude is important, um, and, you know, if we want the game to keep flourishing here in the country, we've got to get the community game going again. And that's, you know, we used to be centred around, the community was centred around rugby. So rugby's got to start asking, what can we do for community to, to um, get it back and to, and to thrive again? So that's, that's basically what we're trying to do in this team. They're such a, a, a real bunch of women, Wayne, and you know you've. And I just hope that they don't get media trained out of this. But I mean, one of the most delightful things is hearing them talk afterwards, hearing hearing the players just speak, hearing them looking at them signing autographs. You can see the glee in their eye, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, it is. I know. Look, we are professional in the men's game. I'm not saying the men's game doesn't have that, but there's just something a little bit more innocent, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for in terms of this. Do you agree? Yeah, I think that love of what they're doing and the the, the gratitude forgetting where they've got to rules over everything and, and it just shines through them. You know, they're, they're, um, they're just a happy group that is excited to be here. It's difficult 
you know, it's, the selection's difficult because, you know, it's probably the first time I've been in where we've had 32 players that could all play, and we've played them all. Not one of them has let us down, and then it becomes um, the selection's, you know, in inches, not not um, metres. You know, it's um, <clears throat> it's just so tight, and we could have we could be playing other women in this in this team in this final. But um, that's the way it is. So that that's always difficult. But man, our our back the backbone of the team, the ones that um, haven't been selected, they were awesome today at training. They they really gave it to our girls. So it was um, very impressive. Uh, you know, and, and your performance. I always think your performance relies on how good those, those girls are, mm-hmm. how good those players are. If they if they're pushing you the whole way and uh, doing everything they can to help you, then you know you're going to go well. Wayne Smith is with us. If you hadn't have gone through everything that you'd gone through, do you think that? I mean, I'm just. I suppose what I'm trying to get is: is everything that you've gone through? At the time you were all black coach and you walked away, and God, we wish you hadn't have walked away. But then Ted got you back, which is just absolutely brilliant. And but everything that you've gone through, your own highs and lows, and that, how much has all of that helped you being who you are with this team right now? Yeah. Um, look, I've, I've probably I've matured. I probably don't feel the pressure quite as much. Um, I have a a way to coach and uh, um, a way to play that. I love. Um, I'm not saying everyone loves it, but it's what I love doing. Um, my days are numbered. Okay, <laughs> I'm that's just another question. Yeah, I'm just, making, <clears throat> yeah I'm just making the most of it, Marty. I'm I'm really enjoying this group. Really loving being back with Ted and Crono and and the 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 other coaches I've got in the group and the staff. The staff have really developed. You know, we we've, we've actually got a really good high performance staff now that um, we've got a you know, weekly um, program that I think's outstanding. And we've all grown together, you know, we've done this together, um, all agreed on stuff and then we've just put it in place and um, had a crack, had a crack at what's different to everyone else probably. One of the things I've always admired about yourself as well and also about Shag as well and also about Ted as well is that you're able to put your own egos aside and bring people in. I mean, this specialised coaching, you bring Dan in and you bring Ellie Williams in and you bring... Um, ben Smith, and I can't remember who else you brought in, but you brought in people that you, that you know as soon as that the, the players see these guys, they go, oh, my God, this guy's here, and, yes, he's here to talk business, and he's here because he's excellent, because he's won World Cups. Is that, is that something that you learned over time in your coaching career, that sometimes you don't have all the answers and that it's better if sometimes an out, outside voice comes in? Oh, absolutely. You know, you, there's, there's nothing unique in the game. You know, we're, we're coaches that... You take stuff from everyone else, and I guess that creates your uniqueness. What you choose to to accept, and what you how you choose to coach, is up to you. And, and that's the only bit that's unique. The, the information you're getting isn't. You know, you just got to put it all together. And you know, I had someone like Daniel Carter, who, who most weeks has turned up to, to take the girls for kicking. The phenomenal man on who's flown up twice to meet with um, Sylvia Brunt. You know, so they're going out of their way to. To give us a hand, and it's just outstanding. I get messages like 160 odd tests after the game, <laughs> and some of them, you know, had. You're going to have to employ something to do all your social media, Sam Smithy. We have Tony, Tony Brook, you know, who was in the 82 um, rowing eight, and they had a reunion, and they were watching the Black Ferns, and you know, and we get messages from them, and you know, these sorts of people had the Top Twins here, who are my favourite in New Zealand. I always loved the Top Twins. They had a hotel here for the trip show they had last night, and they came to the game. You know, it's um, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal the support that we're getting and the excitement of people. You know that um, that's really amazed me. Look, you lit the litmus. The litna, litmus paper was lit, uh, and because of that game, because it had everything. If it had been a forty-point blowout, I don't know if the feeling would be exactly the same. But when it is so stressful and tense and bum squeaking like that, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I know for you it's terrible, but for everyone else watching, I mean, all of a sudden you. You know, you couldn't tear yourself away from it. That, and you know, I'm not saying the tournament needed that, but it did need that. Every every World Cup needs something like that, doesn't it? You can't just manufacture it. It's got to be organic and grow itself or come from somewhere. And that, and it did. Yeah, that's right. That's that's sport at its best, isn't it? You can't program it. Um, the outcome is uncertain right up until the end. Uh, it's nail biting. I never thought I'd go through a one point against a French team. It, Eden Park again in my <laughs> life. <laughs> you know, that's, um, 
Hands off, Black Seven. I remember. Hands off, Black Seven. Thank you, Mr. Joubert. Thank you, Mr. Joubert. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, we we had thirty odd minutes against the French in two eleven without a point being scored and, and held them out. I think the game on the weekend was twenty eight minutes wow. in that second half. Yeah. <clears throat> What do you need to improve Something upon? Like if you had to put your finger on something, what do you want to improve upon against whatever opponent you played on Saturday night in the final? Yeah, obviously you've got to start better. Um, a bit nervy. Um, didn't really execute our plays. It took took a took quite a while for us to actually execute a play really well that we'd been training on. Um, so that's got to get better. Um, it lacks the... The warm up and everything lacks a bit of, um, I don't know, bit of environment. It's um, you're at the background on the cricket ground, and it's a big expense. The other team sort of warming up beside you. Um, you lose. Yeah, we, we've got to get used to that. I think um, find a way to handle that. Make sure that you know we're we're building properly. We're inside ourselves. We know what we're going to do, and we go out and do it well. And there's a lot of things, isn't there? There's, there's the haka, there's the ant, and there's a lot of things that you've got to cope with um, in those first few minutes. And we're trying hard to find ways to to handle that. Um, but they're big occasions, Marty, mm. and this is another one. And so you don't know what it, that effect is going to have on people. But what I do know is um, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep going at it. Like mistake or no mistake, we'll keep going at it. This is Wayne Smith with us. You said before this team is on a thirty match win streak. They're the best team, professional team that you've seen this England side. How good are they, man? Yeah, that, that's phenomenal. Like um, I think they've scored eighteen tries from driving malls, for example. Wow. Um, <clears throat> they've got you know the best jackler in the world, and and Marley Packer, the, the loose forward. Um, yeah, they, they've you know, they, they've got a lot of the best players in the world, and good on them. They've created this through you know, the. the um, you've got to take your hat off to the RFU. They professionalised the game early. Um, they've got good coaches involved, great coaches involved actually, and they've done a bloody great job. And you just got to go on YouTube and have a look at their training sessions, their um, their stuff in the gym. It's phenomenal, Marty. And you know they they deserve everything that they're getting. When you took the job, what was your initial aim? Was it simply about the squad getting getting a, a group of players in, into a headspace and into a professional playing space and into a fitness level, or did you actually sit there and, and write down, "I want to make the final" or "I want to win the final"? Well, I remember saying to the girls, um, like really early on, that we're we're going to make the final, we're just not going to make it today. It was a bold statement, but. Uh, I just want to make the point that we had a long way to go and we had a lot of work to do. Fitness was a big one. Conditioning, we, we've got a great strength and conditioning um, staff. They're fantastic. Great 20 men and Amanda Murphy. Uh, and our, our um, medical staff run by Georgia Milne and Carter Folk. You know, they're, they're really class. Mm -hmm. And so we just set about getting the bodies right, um, getting the fitness and conditioning right, um, working on a game that was going to be unique and exciting to the country and, and represent who we are. Um, so that's really that's really all we've done. We've just set about we set a philosophy, what we wanted to be, who we wanted to who we wanted to be, um, what sort of legacy we wanted to leave, and then we set about trying to do it. You make a lot of mistakes along the way, but. You know, we're, we're still staying true to, to what we said we were going to do. And as I said before, I don't think we could turn around. <laughs> I think it's what you're going to see again on Saturday. A couple of quick questions. We'll let you go. <clears throat> I think you've got, I've already taken up 19 minutes of your time. All right. Um, um, you said that uh, that this is the end for you. You're not going to stay involved. But you have said you've retired before and you've unretired. So I'm not quite convinced yet. Yeah, this is a unique unretirement day. <laughs> 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 way it happened. Yes, uh, yes. You know, I felt, to, to be fair, I felt a bit trapped at one point. That um, What, you mean that you that, couldn't that, say no? Yeah, that, 
you know, even my wife said to me, you've got to do it. <laughs> okay. And, um, yeah, look, I, I'm really happy with where I'm at, where Trish and I are at, where we live, um, what we want to do over the next few years. And, um, yeah, no, retirement will be, it won't be staying at home and, you know, um, filling around the garden and taking the pension every week. You know, we want to travel and want to, we've lived all around the world. I want to go back to see mates and that. And, um, you know, we're not getting any younger. So there's the stuff we want to do. And, yep, that'll be, that'll be us after this. Mills Malina says it's got to be Sir Wayne Smith regardless of this result this weekend. So I'm going to start calling you that straight away now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I could. I could see the look on your face if you'd read that article. I could just. I could imagine the expression on your face, to be honest. But he's saying it because he actually means it. You know that, don't you? He means it from a, from a position of really nice place. Well, he's got a batch just down the road from me. He's probably looking for a shout at the <laughs> at Price Price Bevan Bar. Right. Or he's looking for somebody to mow his lawns on a Saturday. That's what he's actually doing. Um, yeah. Also, can I, I don't, and I don't want to make this awkward, and if you don't want to answer it at all, but I know that Glenn called you in to help him to start with, and I met, bumped into Glenn uh, about five, six weeks ago at, at a mutual mate's 50th and just had a chat to him, and, you know, I just know how much he is supporting and feeling you, and I hope he's been in touch with you as well, because I know he's an old yep. mate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, we've um, had a coffee together. It's, uh, like, it's such a difficult situation, mate. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. No, it's look, you don't have to say difficult. anything, Wayne, because I don't want to get a quote that somebody's going to use in another news story or anything yeah. like that. I just yeah, wanted, sure. I just wanted to mention it because, you know, I know that uh, you are very good friends with him, and I'm gutted at what happened with him and everything, and uh, and just talking to him and that he's just his eyes lit up when I started talking about your team, and so I just wanted to mention it. That was all. Yeah. That was all. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Okay. All the very best for the weekend. I know that this team can't be any better prepared. Um, and it's just going to be one hell of an atmosphere there. I mean, you, you would have noticed that on the weekend finally, that there might have been, I don't know how many people, 20-something thousand or something, but the atmosphere, just the screaming, yelling and everything, it's different from an all-black test, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, 100% it's different. Um, a lot of people there for, to support us that probably aren't you know, really into rugby or, um, you know, it's, it's maybe not been their thing in the past, but they're really into this. And it's outstanding talking to them afterwards. They just love it. You know, they, it's, um, they, and they don't talk about your performance, really. They just, they just love it. Love the occasion. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely yeah. different. Yeah, there's no, there's none of that clip of gasp every time you're in trouble. You know, it's um, yeah, they cheer and they dance and they sing. It's, it's great. All right. Well, I hope that wasn't an awkward question. I don't. I didn't mean anything by it by asking. You know that. You know, I'm just your biggest fan in the world. No, no, good as gold, mate. No, 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 good as gold. All the very yeah. best for this weekend, and okay. thank you for giving us so generous with your time. Twenty three minutes worth. Thanks very much. Thanks, mate. Marty. Cheers, Always mate. Pleasure. Okay. Okay. Great. See you, mate. See you later, mate. Wayne Smith with us here.